Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my second hour special, Matthew Stephen Reif. Yet another special made for you guys by you guys. No streaming service, network, studio behind it. Just another product for you guys to enjoy. If you caught my first special, OnlyFans, again, available on YouTube, then you understand how important your support is to me and how I want to give that right back to you. And this product does exactly that. It's, it's my favorite body of work yet. It's very important to me. And I think by the end of watching it, you're going to understand why. So if you enjoyed half as much as I enjoyed making it for you, hit like, subscribe, comment, share it with your friends, all that good stuff so I can continue to make more for you. Let's see who gets offended. Fuck is online telling me. Always on the internet. Matt Rife ain't about this. Matt ain't about that. Matt just a pretty boy. He don't got jokes. He not even funny to me. Shut the fuck up! Y'all niggas ain't on shit! All y'all motherfuckers talk about is Matt Rife don't sell tickets. Matt a fuck boy. Matt ain't funny. Shut the fuck up! Y'all niggas don't be with that nigga. Y'all don't see the work he put in? Blowing up on TikTok and shit? Nigga been doing stand-up since fucking... I don't know when. Motherfuckers need to stop playing with him like that. That nigga is savage out here. If I catch another motherfucker talking sweet about Matt Wright, I'm fucking beating their ass. I'm not fucking playing no more. You know that nigga Steve grandson? What the fuck is up? How is everybody? Good? Let's go. Oh my god. Thank you guys so much for coming out. This is this is so cool. It means the absolute world. Thank you guys. Oh, just checking y'all out. This is fun. This is good. Gay? One for one, baby. Let's go. Let's go. It's the energy I was looking for. Thank goodness, man. Oh my God. Thank you so much for coming out twice. I appreciate that. It's very brave. Very brave. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wish my entire crowd was gay men, to be honest. It's, dude, it's, dude, it's just an energy you want to be around. You know what I mean? I, dude, I've never met a gay dude in a bad mood. Not once. Just fucking, dude, I've been so jealous of gay men lately. You have no idea. That's what I'm talking about, man. I've been so jealous, man. Oh, God, it just looks like a good time going on over there. God, I wish I was gay for the fitness of the fashion alone. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, I'm straight, but I'd love to be in gay shape. You know what I mean? You ever meet a gay dude? They're in great shape every fucking time, man. It's so impressive. Gay dudes stay in the gym. That's the guy's name, Jim. They just stay in there. They just turning it out, burning calories, dog. It's dedication. You better respect it. That's next level fitness, bro. That's that level of in shape that, like, you could fight off another grown man if you wanted to, you know? That's, that's up to you. You, know, you put in the work top or bottom. That's you, dog. That's your prerogative. God, and if they're not fucking... If they're not fucking shredded, they fuck dress impeccably. You guys look fantastic. Oh, my God. I don't... I don't know if you guys know this, but gay men have a stranglehold on the fashion game. They are killing shit, bro. Nobody in this world dresses better than gay men. You better respect it. It's pretty impressive. I mean, you spend enough time in the closet, you're bound to find something. You know what I mean? Boots. Love it. Exhausted, man. We, uh, we've been traveling a lot this year. It's been very exciting. It's one of the most fun parts about the job. Obviously, it's a little taxing as well. I uh, got a chance to go home recently. Uh, I'm originally from Ohio. I don't know if anybody's ever made that mistake. <laughs> I never go home. I left 10 years ago right after high school, and that's, that's about it, man. I go home maybe once or twice a year. I'll, I'll go home for Christmas or something like that. You know, I'll go home for the holidays. And I don't mind that as much, because whenever I go home for Christmas, I, uh, I stay with my grandpa. 
and I love my grandpa to death. He's probably the closest person to me in my family. And I, I love staying with him because whenever I'm not there, he, he lives by himself. And my grandpa has lived alone for like 15 years. He's been single 15 years. Hasn't been on a date in 15 years. I, yeah, as you can imagine, carpal tunnel's on its way. <laughs> and because he's lived alone for so long, he's kind of become this like crotchety, grumpy old man. Like, he doesn't like anything or anybody just complains all day long. You all know an old person like this. So he, he's always the hardest person to shop for for Christmas every year. So two years ago, it's mid-December, right? I'm, I'm at my place in LA, I'm getting ready to go home, you know, finishing up all my online shopping, and it, it gets down to him every year. I'm sitting there just racking my brain. I'm like, what the fuck? Do I get this dude? He, he, he doesn't like anything. He doesn't like anybody. He doesn't have anybody. So I bought him a pocket pussy. Um, no, normally, normally I would be like, does anybody not know what a pocket pussy is? But this is 6th Street. Y'all be fucking banana peels or whatever y'all can find out here. Y'all in no position to judge my family, okay? Bro, I just wish y'all could have been there to see him open it on Christmas morning. Because we all thought he was going to be like, what the fuck is this shit? But he was like, thank you. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed. I was like, it's a, it's a fleshlight, not a purple heart, dog. Relax, okay? Stop feeling so honored. <laughs> he loved it, man. So obviously Christmas is a good time. And then we fast forward a little bit. Now we fast forward to that following February. And I hadn't spoken to my grandpa since Christmas. So I call him up. Hey, Steve. Steven, what's up, man? How you, how you doing? I, I love you. I miss you. you know, Christmas is fun. It's always good to spend the holidays with you, you know? <laughs> how was it? <laughs> and there was just a silence on his end of the phone. I was like, are you using it right now? Like, fucking answer me, dog. Like, what's... What's the review? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. He goes, no, 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 no. He gets all defensive. And I'll never forget these words for as long as I live. He goes, no, 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 no. I, uh, I broke her neck. <laughs> there is so much to unpack in that one sentence. First of all, her? You gave it a pronoun, now it's real. Second, neck? That's not even what it is. And third, you broke it, dog. How hard are you going? Fucking 15 years, you forget how to be a gentleman? So we, we, we laugh out on the phone for a couple of hours and that, now we fast forward to the following Christmas. This, this is last Christmas. Again, same time of year, going home, finishing up shopping. Gets down to him. So now I'm really struggling. I'm like, what the fuck do I get him this year? Like, like how do I possibly top what I did last year? You know, clearly he enjoyed it. And now my man hasn't had pussy since at least February. So uh, I doubled down, got him another one. I got him two pocket pussies, two Christmases in a row. I'm grandson of the decade, easily. Only, well, you know, you know, obviously I was a little bit more aware of what it was going to be put through this time around. I had to find him one more durable, right? You know, some, something with a stronger neck. Now, now I'm out here trying to find a pocket pussy with traps. Trying to find my papa a trap queen for Christmas. And I fucking, I couldn't find, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. I was so mad. And then I, I think I found the next best thing. I I found this other pocket pussy that I've, I've never seen anything like it. It was remarkable. It, it, it came with, it was like so souped up. It, it came with all these like attachments and, and pieces. It, it was like a Swiss army pussy. It had like a compass and a can opener and it doubles as a canteen if you're lost in the woods, I guess. But by far the best attachment this thing came with was that like if you, if, if you like, Let's say you fuck this side of it, right? Like, this is the entrance. This side of it is a suction cup. The idea being you can fucking... Put it to walls and shit if you need to, I don't know, switch positions, work your legs, you know, whatever it is, you feel like you need it added to your repertoire, you know? And I, 
I got it for him thinking like, oh, this is so creative. You know what I mean? Now my man's got free roam in the house. You know, he's not, he's not bed bound beating his dick like a pilgrim. He's got options. You know what I mean? So I was excited for him, but now I'm fucking terrified to go home this Christmas and there's just going to be chunks of drywall missing all around the house. Waste level. Doing a bit of remodeling, are we? His house looks like a mid-demo project. I'm like, God damn, Papa, you literally fucked from the window to the wall. <laughs> Got your dick sucked down the hall. Oh, Steve, 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 Steve. Oh. <sighs> he's disgusting. <laughs> but he's funny, man. He's very funny. I called him about a month ago, and I, I told him I was going to start telling this story on stage because it's 100% true, and I think the world should know that. <laughs> and he, he's got such a good sense of humor, man. He was joking with me back. He was like, you keep telling people that story. I'm going to leave it to you in my will. <laughs> Which I think would be fucking hilarious. I told him. I was like, yo, you should do that, because I'll fucking, I'll put your ashes in it, name it Ashley, and then I'll fuck it. Just kind of keep it in the family, you know what I mean? Just from generation to generation. Just so he can meet his great grandkids, you know? Just... Guys, it's called cremation. Grow up, okay, will we? Grow up. Not your grandpa. <laughs> yeah, my grandpa's funny, man. You guys would like him. You can judge him if you want to. At least he got somebody. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to find your person, isn't it? Dating's hard. It's, it's a very cliche topic. Every comedian talks about how hard dating is, but yeah, it's, it's a relatable subject. Something everybody goes through, you know. It definitely gets harder depending on where you live, too. Like I said, I live in LA now. It's the fucking worst, bro. There's no good people. Bunch of fucking heathens running around. Nobody's going to heaven. Not one person. City of angels. No angels. Just depressing, man. It's so depressing getting let down every time. Like, I, I just expect it at this point. Every first date I go on, as soon as I sit down, I'm like, all right, bitch, what is it? Ask me. Ask me what my sign is. I dare you. I'll split this check so fucking fast. I swear to God. Oh, you're a Pisces? Awesome. Yeah, charge it to her crystals. They were in the moon all night last night, so clearly, clearly they're juiced up. I'm so fucking tired of hearing about astrology, I swear to God. It's all y'all care about. I've stopped sending dick pics and just started sending my star chart. To be honest, it's getting me so much further. So much further. I hate it so much, man. I have so many red flags now, bro. And no patience, that's the main thing. It's like, I've been let down so many times. Like now, if I, if I see something that triggers a red flag in me, I'm gone. I'm not gonna wait around to be inevitably let down. You know what I mean? It's a waste of time. And I've got so many red flags that there's, there's some that I wanna get off my chest. And I think, I think maybe we'll find some common ground. And maybe you'll think I'm crazy, but I think it's worth finding out. <laughs> and we'll start slow. We're gonna ease our way into it. We're gonna start with red flag number one. And just a disclaimer, this one is not going to be the funniest one, but I do think it's going to resonate with the most amount of people here. Red flag number one is when she ha- <laughs> That bitch, that bitch is red flag number one. That bitch is red flag number one. <laughs> Girls who don't drink enough water. That's what it is. Red flag number one is when she has another guy in her life who is consistently trying to sleep with her and she refuses to acknowledge this. This is good. This is gonna cause a lot of fights in my car right home. This is my favorite one. You clapping hard as fuck. You had, a, you had an argument recently. <laughs> Like I said, this isn't the funniest one, but you better believe every dude in here in a relationship right now knows the guy in his girl's life that he's like, 
fuck that dude. I'll kill him tomorrow. <laughs> it's so obvious to us, right? As the boyfriend, this shit is clear as day. We can spot it from a mile away, usually in the beginning of the relationship. We'll clock it, we'll pull you aside. Hey, babe, I, uh, I know you hang out with so-and-so, and that's, that's, that, 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 that's fine. You're a grown woman, you can do whatever you want. I'm not controlling or anything, but just, just so you know, that dude's trying to fuck you. And women will always have the exact same naive reaction. Babe, come on. Are you serious? Him? You're worried about him? He's literally like my best friend. Like he's literally, he's literally like a brother to me. Oh. Word? Oh, that's your brother. Oh, I didn't realize what kind of porn hub family tree you were associated with but shut it down, okay? He's not your friend, he's not your brother, he wants to enter your body holes, end of story, okay? It, ladies, you have to understand the, the reason, the reason we are so passionate about bringing this to your attention is not because we think you're stupid, it's not because we don't trust you, it's that you're being taken advantage of. You're hanging out with somebody who's lying about their intentions so they can weasel their way into your life. And that's not a real friend, that's some shady shit to do. So we're just trying to point out something that's happening under your nose, so hopefully you can be aware of it and put a stop to it. I, I promise you, we are coming at it with good intentions. And you still want to get mad at us and act like we're the crazy ones making this shit up. Oh, that is so ridiculous. Why would a guy go through all that trouble and pretend to be my friend just to sleep with me? I don't know. <laughs> but I've done it so many times. I've done it so many times. How do you think I got you, stupid? Come on, oh my God. Nobody, no, nobody has been a better friend than me. Are you kidding me? That's why dudes can spot the shit, because fucking game recognize game, you know what I mean? He'll do, he'll do some shady shit and we're like fucking, good move, that's what shit I would've done, you know? Fuck you, but respect. <laughs> he is not your friend, ladies. And if you really do treat him like your best friend, oh, that's so much worse. Because if you treat him like your best friend, that means you have gone to him with all of your secrets, all of your problems, he knows everything you like, everything you don't like. You've probably complained to him about everything your boyfriend does wrong. So now this motherfucker has all the infinity stones to become the perfect guy for you. So, so when you and your boyfriend finally break up, who do you go run into? Me. And I've been waiting for this moment, boy. Weeks, months, maybe years. I've been waiting for this exact opportunity, bro. I've been, I've been putting in work, too. I've been, I've been sending you memes in the morning. I've been, I've been texting you, how's your day going? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your day. Are you stupid? It's my day. I care about my day. Come on, man. It's about patience. All I've had to do is play it cool and stay in the game long enough and wait for the day that you come banging on my door, <laughs> crying your eyes out. And I just have to play stupid like, oh, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. Why are you crying? <laughs> He said he doesn't trust me. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Y'all broke up? Oh my God. I am so sorry. Oh, some dudes are so insecure. Oh my God. He's not your fucking friend. Stop falling for his shit, ladies. I'm trying to tell you. Preach. Shut up. Now, I understand this is the part of the red flag that I, I'm sure a lot of the women in the audience are thinking, well, Matt, what about the reverse? How about when a guy has a girlfriend? What about that? 
and I, I hear you. Look, ladies, you can be, look, a guy can have a girl that is just a friend. No, listen, 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 listen. Listen. I'll wait. You as a girl can be just a friend to a guy, but it means you're ugly. I'm sorry, I know you don't want to hear it, but you just a homie with a ponytail. I don't know what else to tell you, man. Men and women can be just friends, but one of y'all fucking busted, okay? Somebody ugly is, or maybe both. Maybe both of you are ugly, in which case y'all should be fucking anyways. That's why it's called bumping uglies. Like I said, it's not the funniest one, but you got some thinking to do. <laughs> oh, man. Red flag number two. Red flag number two. She cannot have any distinct physical features. I'll explain. Nobody feel targeted. And before you get mad at me, I'm not even the shallow one in this red flag, by the way. It's my fucking friends. Because all of my friends are black and they will roast you within an inch of your life if you have anything prominent about your face that stands out at all. They have cost me so many potential relationships. I was seeing this girl last summer. I, th I thought maybe she was the one, man. She was fucking beautiful. She was smart. Funny, didn't know her dad. She was new to town. She, she was new to town. She just moved to LA from Austin a couple months before I met her. Like, like very, very sweet, innocent girl, right? We were hanging out for a while. We went on a handful of dates, and everything was going great until like just a couple of dates in. I, I was hanging out with a bunch of my friends of mine who I hadn't seen in a while. So you know, we're hanging out, catching up, and they're grilling me about you know what's going on, what's new, you seeing anybody, and. I was, I was, I was so proud and excited to be seeing this new girl. So, you know, I, I broke out her Instagram. I was like, that's, that's her. <laughs> and my friends immediately were like, oh! <laughs> Which is black for I'm about to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Bro, they roasted this poor girl for like 90 minutes. Did I laugh? Yeah, but fuck those dudes. I'm not gonna stop hanging out with her over it, you know? I, I, I didn't, we, we kept hanging out, we went on a few more dates. Until our last date, man. We were at dinner and she just laid it out there. She was like, you know what, Matt? I'm having a really nice time with you. And I think it's time we take this relationship to the next level. And we need to start incorporating our friends into our hangouts. You know, I, I need to meet your friends. You need to meet my friends. We'll all hang out together, see if our friend groups get along, you know? And I was like, uh, <laughs> why? You know, what? <laughs> why are you trying to rush things? You know, I'm having such a good time getting to know you, you know? She's like, no, it's. It's important that our friends get along. I was like, no, I, I hear you. I just don't. I don't think it's such a good idea. And she started to get really upset. She was like, and why not? And I was like, because... Because we have the same chin. She was like, what? I was like, you have like a cleft chin like how I have. Like it's, it's very strong. It's, it's a very masculine facial feature. And like, I, I think it's cute, obviously. <laughs> but not everybody does. <laughs> she was like, what are you trying to say? I was like, my friends are going to roast you. <laughs> They're gonna make fun of the way you look. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's just how they are. She goes, oh, that is so childish. Like, what are they gonna say? That I have like a butt chin? Ooh, so original. Like, I've heard it all before, babe. And I was like, 
no. You haven't. I don't know how many black friends you have, but this is kind of what they do, okay? Do you know that they call you the Texas Chinsaw Massacre? Did you know that? That was just off the top. She was so offended. She was like, oh, that is so rude. Is that all they know about me is what I look like? I was like, no, they know you just moved here from Texas to be a chinfluencer, they said. Uh, and now I miss her, man. I don't know. She was my little chinderella. So stupid. I appreciate you wearing your best shorts. <laughs> I know it's hot outside, but like this is still an event. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, I know I'm going to a comedy show, but just in case there's a trampoline. <laughs> Didn't even try you mowing the grass after this? God damn, man. Whatever. It's not your night. You're right. Pressure's on me. <laughs> Red flag number three. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> red flag number three, a, a big red flag for me is if I don't have anything in common, like hobby-wise with somebody. Like it, it's, it's, it's such a necessary relationship trait to have, I think. It's so easy to be physically attracted to somebody. Obviously, it's everyone's first instinct. But I, th I think if you want longevity in, in a relationship, you have to have that extra layer of compatibility, right? You, ha you have to want to do things together, I think. So like a, a big red flag for me is like if a girl doesn't go to the gym. And that's just because it's a very big part of my life. I, I love going, I go every day. I'm a very big advocate of going to the gym and working out. And it's, it's so good for your health, not just your physical, but your mental health as well. Get your endorphins going, get some of that stress relief out of you, you know. But I do acknowledge that it's, it's not for everybody. It's, it's, it's intimidating for some people who don't go every day. And I try to be cognizant of that and I try to help out the best I can. Like, there may, be, there may be some people in here right now or maybe watching at home that want to get started and just don't know how to take that first step. And if there is anybody out there, I, I highly recommend the program I just started about six months ago that changed my life forever. And that, that program is where I only work out with black dudes. <laughs> Exclusively. Because black dudes will push you to your limits whether you want to or not. <laughs> I started about six months ago, man. I was in the gym one day, and I, I was having a bad day. I was, I was stressed about something. I was angry about something, and I was like, man, fuck this. I'm, I'm going to use this negative as a positive. I'm going to use this aggression. I'm going to put up some weight. And I was hitting a chest day, so I was like, fuck it. I'm going to hit a new max on the, on the bench press. So I go in there, put the lighter weights on first, get loosened up, get warm, you know, and then, then you got to put on the heavier stuff. And when you do that, you're supposed to have a... Um, spotter. Yeah, 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 spotter, so you don't die and i didn't know anybody in there at the time closest person to me was the black dude at the bench next to me so i walked over i was like hey man would you uh would you mind spotting me for this set real quick and he was like yeah i got you i was like i feel like you do Everything about your voice is safe. I feel like I can lift the world now. Okay, come on. So we, so we go over to the bench together. He, he gets behind the rack in the spot position. He's ready. I lay down, and I'm whew, trying to psych myself up, get in the zone, line up my hands, get a good grip, and finally I just, finally I just I get it off the rack. Oh, I get one rep in. Oh, I get two reps in. I get... I, I get stuck on the third, my, my, my arms start shaking. And he can see this. So like any good spotter, he has some words of encouragement. I'm trying not to die, and this man just gets in my ear. And do that shit. Do that shit, it ain't nothing, I was like, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired. He was like, my people been tired. I was like, God damn. I'm sorry. It was
was only like 255. You had white guilt on top of that? It's like 500 pounds, man. I was like, is this pre-workout or a history lesson? What are we doing, dog? <laughs> Fucking, I racked that shit up. I was like, I appreciate you, man. I was struggling at the end. He was like, you don't know struggle. <laughs> Fuck, man. Can't have anything. So that's my new routine whenever somebody's like, you look good, Matt, you want a diet? I'm like, yeah, it's called White Watchers. You should try it. So, so when black people watch white people struggle, you will sweat, I promise you. This is one of the whitest crowds I've ever seen in my entire life. Bro, I'm uncomfortable. Y'all are so, is this a comedy show where I'm needing? God damn. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Red flag number, mm. We could try something different. This could be fun, or it could be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but I think we can have fun. Um, so the thing is, is that I could do red flags for hours. We, we, and they could be funny, we could all laugh, have a guaranteed good time, but who wants to do that? <laughs> so, and a lot of times, I don't like to do a lot of red flags because it, it is very male to female. You know, it's, it's, it's listing things, that men don't like about women. And I don't want that to be unfair, one-sided, or sexist. So to even it out, sometimes I am genuinely curious. Like, for, for, for the women in the audience, what might be some red flags for a guy if you go on a date with him? He says or does this that makes you kind of be like, ooh, I don't know. Hold on, I'm going to go balcony. I'm going to go balcony. What is it? Is it a good one? Splitting the check. Okay, splitting the check. Uh, on a first date? He asked in the beginning of the date? Towards the middle? Oh, you were boring. Uh, in the middle? Can I get you anything? Yeah, two checks? Two checks would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where did you say you were from? But how, how recently was this? Five months ago. Okay, and you still upset? Um, so, wh hold on, hold on. Where, 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 did you, where did you go to eat? Uh, the gin and temple. What is it? The gin and temple. The gin and temple. What is that? <laughs> Rude. What kind of restaurant is that? Yeah, catfish and steak. <laughs> it's like a roadhouse, an expensive roadhouse. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe. Did you like him? Until that moment, did you like him? No. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious. Until he asked to split the check, were you like, this is going good? <laughs> you were? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh my God. Let me ask, did you sleep with him? Yes. Wow. Oh my God. He split you and the check in one night. Oh my God. Did he leave a big tip? <laughs> Hold on, if that was an unnecessary detail, would you say? I said he was sweaty when he did it. <laughs> he was sweaty after, yeah, my man was putting in work. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's good. I would think. Uh, well, I'm sorry you got half of a meal. Sorry you got half of a meal. All right, we're one for one. What's another fun one? Do you have a fun one? What is it? This is gonna get cancelable. 
Let's do it. So you said, it, when he says he's on hormone therapy, but he's just fucking jacked. So hormone therapy, what's that supposed to do? Balance it out, basically? So what, he says he has too much, like, natural testosterone? No, he doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough? Okay, how long have you been seeing this man? 25 years? What? Where'd you meet him? You met him when you guys were kids. So he tells you he's going on hormone therapy to, to, to get more testosterone, but you, you, think he's, you think he's on steroids? You know so? Did you find them? Could you get me some? I'm trying to get in gay shape, dog. Let's go. I'm taking all the shortcuts. Did you, you, you did find some? Was it a needle or a pill? You oh. She said she thinks he is in gay shape. The plot thickens. Oh my God. This is, this is the bigger red flag now. He has his workout buddies. Do you have a picture of him? I want to see if I want to see what his gaydar says about. Oh fuck! God damn it! The phones are locked up. God damn! <laughs> Your phone is in a hormone blocker. God damn it! Okay, after the show, I want to see this. Yeah, I mean, that's a valid red flag. You don't want somebody who's lying about an obvious a, a appearance thing. Like, if you're clearly on steroids, just own up to this shit. It's fine. It's fine to do it. If that's the, if that's the body you want and the life you want to live, you can, can fucking do that. It's fine. As long as you can still get your dick up, you're fine. He can't? Then it's not okay. Stop what you're doing immediately. Stop seeing him. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Let's unlock our phone. Oh. Can we unlock your phone? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Bro, what if it's just a picture of me? <laughs> Eric's like, unlock the phone! And I'm like, nah, we don't gotta do all that. We don't gotta, let's just take our word for it. <laughs> Oh my God, that's it? That's what you unlock them with? That fucking flying saucer? Can I, may, may I see your phone? There we go, pass it over. Oh, this is great. This better be worth it. There we go, pass that back to her. There we go, I just, I just gotta see a picture of this guy and then I wanna see what you think. <laughs> I wanna test this gaydar, let's go. God damn. Bro, he has the traps that my grandpa's pocket pussy wishes it had. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why is his neck so big? <laughs> oh my God, this motherfucker looks so unsure. <laughs> okay. Resident gay? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? <laughs> what, what is it? The pose. The pose? He's gay? Ding 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 Any excuse to drink, go ahead. No, this is good. Whenever we out a gay, an angel gets his wings. This is good. This is good. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you know what's fucked up? I've posed like that before, so I was like... That's mm. fine. Okay. Two for two. That, see, all right, that was good. We're gonna do. We're gonna do one more for an even three. I don't know if you could top that, but what's what's a more fun one? College baseball. Oh man, you've been fingered in a dorm for sure. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. All righty. 
Let's dive into this. All right, all right, so who went pro and didn't take you with them? Who was it? <laughs> all right, what, what is it that you don't like about college baseball players? The ego of playing a, a collegiate sport at a high level. <laughs> he can't be proud about that. The seventh pitcher on the team. I love how you're clowning them for that, but Loki, you fucked the seventh pitcher on the team. <laughs> Girl, yo, your pussy is the bullpen. Do you know that? Strike one. <laughs> so it's just an ego thing? That's the only thing you don't like about it? Because he could just be proud to be playing a sport, because I, I love playing high school sports. I didn't get to play at a college level, but I would have been very excited to. <laughs> oh. He, he, you never fucked him? Damn, you couldn't even fuck the seventh pitcher on the baseball team? Damn. Strike two. Oh my God. Where did you go to school? You didn't go to school? You didn't go to college? Strike three, bitch. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, that could not have went better. That could not have went better. Oh my God. <laughs> have you tried Little League? <laughs> For the love of the game. Come on guys. Okay. Well, that was fun. It's, fun. it's a fun portion. No more crowd work. Nobody, yell out. Nobody else yell out anything. <laughs> that chapter's done. No, that's fun. That's fun. I, li I, li I like doing that portion of the show. because It's like, obviously, I come out here, I list all these red flags and their standards that I've set for myself. But it's, it's nice to know where other people draw the line, you know? What are some other people's red flags? Or is, it, is it something that could apply to me? You know, there's a lot of self-reflecting that I think people need to do more often. Especially, use that time. When you're single, if you're single, Use that time, do some self-reflection. Think about the kind of shit you like. I went through a, a horrible breakup at the beginning of this last year, and I thought it was such a lull moment. I was like, this is a, such a lull in my life. Nothing, nothing positive is gonna come out of this, but I did some thinking. And it made me realize so much about myself. It made me think about the standards I wanted to set, but it also made me think about how much I fucking hate being single. This shit is so trash. <laughs> it's so trash. People overhype the fuck out of being single, don't they? Especially the freedom aspect of it. As soon as you're single again, all your friends are like, oh, you can go sleep with whoever you want. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you couldn't before. Why could you now, all of a sudden? Also, that's not even like an appealing factor of being single to me. I don't like, I don't like sleeping with a bunch of different people anyways, because I don't like, yeah, it's not fun. That's not fun, man. I don't. I don't like inconsistent feedback. <laughs> Bro, I can't, my ego can't handle it, dog. I'm too fickle, okay? I need to know where I stand sexually at all times, okay? That's the best part of any long-term relationship. If, you, if you've been together long enough, you probably have pretty good sexual chemistry. It's why you stuck around. You like what they like, they like what you like meshes pretty well. The relationship that I ended earlier this year, that was the best part about it. We stayed together months after we should have just because we had that sexual chemistry. It's, it's, a, it's a hard spark to walk away from. It's fun, makes you feel good about yourself. You know, I, I was getting my ego stroke daily. Like, how, how the fuck you walk away from that? It's so much fun. I knew with this girl, there was like a certain position I could put her in. And if I hit her with like the right move, just bow, then like she couldn't handle that. Like it was too much dick for her. She was like, oh, my stomach. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> what Elmer? <laughs> It is not in your stomach with your, with your shallow guts, whatever. 
I should call her. <laughs> Fuck, man. Don't, don't, don't call the ex. Don't do it, don't fall for it. Because sexual chemistry will make you ignore all the other red flags, the shit you should be paying attention to. Like, we, like my ex and I, we had great sexual chemistry, but our communication was fucking terrible. We could never talk anything out. If there was ever a point that I needed to get across to her, I would just have to like finger her in Morse code or something. I would just have to just... Then the next day, my boys are like, how'd the talk go? I'm like, it was terrible. This bitch just sat back and rolled her eyes at me the whole time. <laughs> Luckily, I can read lips. <laughs> Hate it. But, you know, single again. Back to the streets. Now I just gotta... Have sex with all these women. I don't want to do. I don't want to do it. I'd rather be in a relationship personally, but somebody had fucking other plans. And I want y'all to think about that the next time you're about to chastise a dude for being a fuck boy. Like, oh, oh, you just a fuck boy. You out here sleeping with all these girls. You don't even want to be in a relationship. You're just a fuck boy. Maybe he's not a fuck boy. Maybe he's sad. <laughs> Maybe behind every fuckboy is a man who once loved too much. Or maybe that's exactly what a fuckboy would say. TBD. But while I'm single, I'm trying to use this, use this time to be self-reflective, work on myself, think about what, what are some of the red flags I bring to the table. Is there something I could be working on? And uh, a major one, a major red flag for me that's been brought to my attention that I, I didn't realize was as big of a deal as it is. And it's, you know, in relation to the, the climate we live in today. And that red flag is that apparently I'm not very PC. I'm, I'm not very politically correct. Sorry, I don't know if that term made it down here yet or not. Y'all don't, don't seem to give a fuck. So. <laughs> And when I say that, I just mean like I'm not one of those people who tries so fucking hard to like prove how woke, what a good person I am. Because that shit comes across as so disingenuous and corny to me. Like you're clearly pandering so hard. You can be a good person without it being your entire fucking personality. You know what I mean? It's so exhausting, man. As long as... As long as you know your heart's in the right place, you're doing the best that you can. You, know, you, don't, you don't need to prove yourself on Twitter every fucking day. And obviously, I'm referencing the extremes, these like woke internet warriors or whatever you want to call them, these fucking losers who spend their whole life trying to cancel people on the internet. That shit pisses me off so much because they're, they're, ruining, they're ruining a good agenda. Cancel culture is not necessarily a bad thing. I, I get what they're trying to do is eradicate negativity in the world and get rid of some bad toxic shit, and we do need that. But a lot of that gets lost in translation when they carry it out because they themselves are such bitches, dog. Oh my God, bro. And that drives me insane because I'm, I'm on their side. I hate the same shit they hate. Off the top of my mind, I can think of um, homophobia. Homophobia is a massive pet peeve of mine because it doesn't fucking affect you. Who somebody else loves has nothing to do with you. And, oh, and it is always the ugliest fucking dude who's the most homophobic, isn't it? The most toothless motherfucker from Corpus Christi. To, <laughs> to be to be on some, I'm, I'm not with that gay shit. They're not with you either, bro. Have you met a gay guy? They're handsome, they're in good shape. They can fuck your girl so fast, okay? Be thankful they took a competitor off the board. I hate it so much, man. There's such a pain in the ass. And as, as you can imagine, you all have the internet. It makes our job incredibly difficult. Nope, nobody's allowed to joke about anything anymore. Everyone wants to complain about every joke ever told. That's so frustrating because, I mean, 
No. You guys have been here the whole show. You know I have a pretty fucked up sense of humor. Like, I, I, I love dark shit. Like, the darker, the better to me. Like, I love that so much. Uh, well, keep that same energy. Uh, <laughs> Like, I, I, I love fucked up stuff, but again, I, I'm okay making those jokes because I know my heart's in the right place. And even though I acknowledge that that sense of humor isn't for everybody, I'm okay with that because I don't need to impress everybody. The same way you wouldn't try to be friends with everybody, right? You'll find your people as your life progresses. So it's like, yeah, I might get in trouble, and, or yeah, some people might not like the jokes that I tell, but I'm, I'm going to tell the jokes that I want to tell, and hopefully my audience will gravitate towards that, and we can all get along and have a fucking cool friendship, you know? And it gets tricky sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll do jokes that a lot of people wouldn't want to tell or don't want to listen to sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes I'll do jokes about like trans people, because it's funny. <laughs> sometimes. Not a disrespectful, it's never disrespectful. I'm just making light of a situation so we can all laugh rather than be touchy and upset. That's all it is. And this, this is what's so funny. The energy in the room is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Subject matter is what triggers people. I haven't even said the joke yet. All I said was trans people and everybody in here got a tight asshole. Everybody. <laughs> Not you guys, but everybody else. Everybody else tighten the fuck up. So, <laughs> this special is presented by Poppers. <laughs> if you don't know what poppers are, get you some gay friends, change your life. Change your life. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. All I did was say a trigger word and people are automatically already uncomfortable. You guys are worried about being canceled, just being in the room. Like, it's so funny to me. Because the jokes that I tell, they're never disrespectful. They're always with the utmost respect. That it's, I, I never want to hurt anybody's feelings. They're just, just some jokes, just to say some goofy shit, make the world laugh. That's all. And people will still come up to me after shows saying the same angry rant every time. Just fucking, you, you, fuck, you cannot make jokes about trans people. So what they're going through is so incomparable and you can't imagine how hard their life is and the shit that they have to go through. Therefore, you cannot make jokes about trans people. And, and I, I, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. But... <laughs> the point that you're trying to make is you're saying, I can't make jokes about somebody because of how hard their life is. And you are making very valid points in that I, I don't know how hard that life is. I imagine it is tremendously harder than my life. I, I can't imagine how hard that is to go through, and I, and I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> but... <laughs> at the same time, to retort that argument, you also don't have the hardest life. <laughs> you know who has life way harder than trans people that we never talk about? People in wheelchairs. <laughs> Think about it. Comparatively, people in wheelchairs have a much harder life. Do they complain about it? No. We gave them a couple of ramps and kept it pushing. We fucking... Well, like, Look, some, some people are going to think this is an insensitive comparison. I think it's a step in the right direction, personally. I think, I think if we want to head towards trans equality, we fucking start with better parking. You know, it's, it's the least we could do. It's the least we could do. I don't know where we'd put them. We can't assign them anything. <laughs> God, just joking. Just joking. Okay, relax. Hey, look, if you let it be, this can be the most fun part of the show, okay? If you, if you just have fun for the next 15 minutes, we're all gonna laugh at some things that we don't think we're allowed to laugh at. Like, oh, oh, is it like a naughty thing if I laugh at a joke at a comedy show? Have fun, okay? Do not get sensitive now. Don't fucking sit there and feel like you need to defend the wheelchair community. They can fucking stand up for themselves, okay? For the God damn it, you guys. Stop being hesitant, okay? <laughs> Knock it off. People in wheelchairs come to comedy shows all the time. It is incredibly common. And you know what? They are some of the best audience members you could ever ask for. They come, they laugh their asses off. And I'll tell you the reason I believe that to be true. And it's because I, th I think they've gotten themselves to this point of understanding and this positive mindset that no matter the hand you've been dealt in life, no matter how hard things might be for you, if you can learn to find the light 
in whatever dark situation you're going through and you can learn to laugh at the things that should make you miserable, including yourself sometimes, that's how you fucking win life. And you are going to be a significantly happier person. If, if you can learn to laugh in the face of adversity. I just, I, I, I know this seems harsh, but I just, I have little to no respect for anybody who wakes up every day and makes the decision to live with a victim's negative mentality of, oh, everything's awful, everyone's out to hurt my feelings. <laughs> Only because that's, that's not fair to you. That's not fair to yourself. Your life is so short and so precious, you deserve to have the best fucking time you possibly can and laugh your way through life and be as happy as you can, no matter your circumstance and no matter what anybody fucking says about you, you deserve that. Have some fun. We're only here for a second. Have some fun, man. And that's why I chose the comparison that I did. A lot of people think it's an insensitive comparison in the beginning, comparing those two groups. But it's because the positive message that I'm trying to put out there, and I want people to remember, is that no matter what you're going through, I would never negate that. But I want you to remember, if you think your life is hard, somebody has it worse. Try to remember that. Be grateful, be happy, and enjoy your time no matter what. And that's... That's what I love about this example, is because if you think about the life of somebody in a wheelchair, that's fucking hard. It's a daily obstacle to overcome to do anything every day. And the fact that they can laugh their way through that, we should all be able to. That's what I have so much respect for the wheelchair community, is because regardless of what they're going through, people in wheelchairs are never annoying about their situation until they're getting on the bus. <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all have been stuck behind a city bus sending somebody in a wheelchair on, but it is fucking excruciating. You're behind them trying to make that right turn and they're fucking Put this motherfucker on the bike rack and let's go. That is the only time I have ever lost my patience on a handicapped person is when they're fucking up traffic, okay? Other than that, they're angels. <laughs> Look, if you're still upset about the comparison, feel free to think about it and tell me I'm wrong. Let's say you did. Let's, let's say you took somebody with, with no legs and a trans person and you put them in the same room, the, the same handicap accessible room. <laughs> See who you think has the harder life. I just, I feel like I'm trapped inside of another person's body. So you have four legs? <laughs> you're, you're, you're not listening, it's, it's not about that. It's, it's a, Sometimes my mental health will take such a toll that I could just, I could just jump off of my balcony. Jump? What's that? You're, you're, you're not here. People will call me the wrong pronouns. Someone called me Chariot Tubman the other day. You think, you think a pronoun's the worst thing you can be called? Come on. What about a trans person in a Oh, you mean transportation? Are you... me dog <laughs> oh shit uh, <laughs> look this is this is a hard joke to pull off it's like a prosthetic leg like you just gotta no no it is it is 
obviously, you, you take two marginalized groups of people who are going through a tough time, and you think you can't make jokes about that. But you can. <laughs> you, the joke works if my point is inarguable, and I think it is. <laughs> I think those examples speak for themselves. But. I guess I just can't wait for the day that I'm doing this joke at a show and there's a trans person in the audience who gets so offended, they walk out. And I'm just like, show off. Some of y'all are still on edge and it's very annoying. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it one last try. I'm gonna give it one last try to get y'all on my stuff. This is my last attempt to get through to y'all, okay? I was working on this joke when it was like brand new about like eight weeks ago, right? I was, I was in Arizona and it's, it's, it was a new joke. I'm trying to figure it out. Obviously, it's a little tricky to navigate. Obviously, it teeters a very fine line of offensive and funny, which, which is where you want your jokes. You know, have some fun, push the boundaries, you know? So I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to make it the best it can be. And I can see out of the corner of my eye, front row, Left side of the stage is a young woman in a wheelchair. And I'm in the middle of like the trans versus wheelchair material. And I can see out of my peripheral vision, she's laughing her ass off. She, no, I'm serious, this girl is, she's slapping her knee. She can't feel it, but she's slapping her knee. Like this bitch is rolling, you know what I mean? She's fucking, ah. Uh, you know how they be laughing? Ah. Uh, uh, handicapped people laugh like they're getting good head. Just ah. Uh, uh. It's just, she's she's so obviously having a great time, right? So when the joke was over, it, it dawned on me that I had a very unique opportunity to get an inside perspective on this material. And, and in order for a joke like this to work, it, it has to be funnier than it is offensive. And again, I want it to be. I never want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's, it's just jokes, man. That's, it's, it's as simple as that to me. But I'm always open to conversations. So when the joke was over, I asked her, I was like, out of curiosity, was anything I said in that joke offensive? And still laughing, this woman says, no, 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 no. It was, it was so fucking funny. And, and I want to thank you for including me. I had never, I had never, I had never realized that so many people were so uncomfortable around handicapped people that a lot of the times they won't even laugh about some of the same things they want to laugh about and things that they think are hilarious. So getting that confirmation is what gave me all the confidence I needed to know that these jokes are okay to tell and we are allowed to laugh at them, you know? Her and I... Her and I were on the same page the whole time. We both know that's what you do to vegetables. You roast them. <laughs> for that shit, I would never be your friend. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Bro, then I fucked her? That's the crazy thing. It was after the show. Hey! 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 I'm not saying it was me, but she wasn't walking the next day. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was like, can you feel it in your stomach? She was like, I can't feel anything. I was like, yeah. My name is Matt Reif. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Listen, listen, listen no, sir, for one second. Um, first and foremost, thank you all so much. This means the absolute world to me. And I know, 
I, I know we laughed a lot in the past hour, but if, if you wouldn't mind, there is something important I would actually like to share with you guys. Um, and it's something I wanted to address about this special, it's very important to me, is, is the name of the special, being Matthew Stephen Reif. Uh, it's, it's my full name. If you guys buy the DVD, you can get my social security number too. <laughs> But it's, 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 it's my full name, obviously, Matthew and Rife being my first and last name, and my middle name being Stephen, and I'm named after my grandpa. Uh, the same, yeah. <laughs> the same uh, pocket pussy grandpa. And just to clarify, yes, that story is 1,000% true. Zero embellishment, he was, he's a fucking monster. Um, but the reason we've decided to, uh, this special was going to be named something totally different and I wanted to dedicate this special to my grandpa because uh, just under two weeks ago he passed away. Um, and the whole show, I mean this whole special taping almost didn't happen. I mean he's my absolute, my best friend and I love him and miss him so much. And he wasn't able to come to, uh, to my first special taping last year. Um, so for this one, I was like scrambling. I was like, How, do I even want to do this one? It doesn't feel right to do a show without him. So I mean, we scrambled together. We changed some of the set for it. Like um, this right here is, uh, is, is his hat that he wore like every single day. Um, there's even a, a photo. It's a black and white photo of like he and I when I was a baby. Uh, I mean, clearly we were on the set of one of his 70s pornos. Um, and I miss him a lot. And um, like I said, he, he, he wasn't able to come to my first special taping last year because it was kind of the height of COVID and everything. He also hadn't been on a plane in like 30 years. So for this one, a couple of months ago, like four or five months ago, when we decided we were going to do this special, I, I really, really wanted to fly him out here. And he was very excited to, because I, I, I wanted to kind of immortalize and, and, and in front of everybody that was here, tell him just how much he meant to me and just thank you for you every know. single thing that he did. <laughs> I mean, you guys, <laughs> you guys really don't understand. Um, I, I spent every weekend with him when I was a kid. Like, he's the one that showed me, like, all, all these funny, we would sit around and watch, like, Adam Sandler movies and, and, and stuff like that. You know, very inappropriate movies for a child to watch. Um, and he was very funny. Like, he's definitely the reason I have a sense of humor. And when I was starting out doing stand-up when I was 15, um, how open mics work, it, a lot of the times, I started out at the local comedy club in Columbus, Ohio called The Funny Bone, and they would have these open mics, and how those work a lot of the times is they're called bringer shows. So you'd have to, you have to bring five people in order for you to get stage time. And I was 15, all my friends were in middle school. <laughs> so obviously I couldn't have anybody come, so my grandpa would buy five tickets so that I could get stage time and do like this silly thing because he thought I was so funny. <laughs> so, I, I, re I, I really wish he was here to see all of you people here and just to, to let you guys know if, 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 if I have ever made any of you laugh, ever, it's, it's because of him. Um, <laughs> and that's what... <clears throat> That's why like, when we were going over the stage decoration for how we were going to do this stage, like, I wanted it kind of plain and rugged, um, but then obviously I wanted, him here at, here, I wanted him here at the show so bad, so, which is why we decided to leave a seat open for him on the stage, hoping that he would want to watch the show. And 
as as heartbreaking as it is that he couldn't come and, and be at the show himself, um, fortunately enough, oh, no! Ashley could. Um, so, in the name of Steve, this one's for you, Papa. Thank you so, so much for tuning into this special. This is our second self-produced special, and it means the absolute world to me that you guys tuned in in support of this. And for anybody who might want to show any additional support, we just added a bunch of new merch on my website at mattrifeofficial.com. We just added t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, hats, bracelets that you can actually pay anything you want for. And all the money we are making from merch is going towards the next third self-produced special we'll be putting out next year. And to top it off, we are going to auction off the star of the second special, not me, um, Ashley herself. And I have signed it for you. It's from me. It's from the show. It's a little creepy, a little sexy, a little gross. My grandpa for sure possesses it, but so can you. So thank you so much again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you at the next one. I hate this. I hate this so much.